I've told a great many secrets, tis true. Beyond this door lies the Holocron Vault. The Holocrons contain the most closely guarded secrets of the Jedi Order. Hey, welcome to another Tales from the Dark Side. Got an interesting one for you. Got a very interesting character here. She's definitely kind of darkish. We don't know. She sits on one of those middle sides. We're not darkish, not lightest. Definitely work for the Empire. She might be something else, too. We're going to get into her. She's a very interesting character. Her name is Ray Sloan. For those that don't know, she had a lot of connections with a lot of dark side characters and that type of the realm. She had it with Vader, the Emperor. She touched both those. Can we say that? We can't say that. She was connected to both those two characters. She also was connected to the uh, Wexleys, Wedge, Tarkin. She was connected to both the Rebels and Kanan and Daddy and Kitty Hux. And she ends up showing up with the First Order. I know she doesn't look like she could be, get that old, but she could. We start her story off in 441 BBY. Uh, in the Aftermath books, it does a lot of backstory for her. I don't know if you guys have read these yet. I hope you have. If you haven't, you probably should. There's, they're probably some of the best sets out there. Um, Chuck did a really good job. I wish he was still doing more for Star Wars. But it's on the to-do list. Yeah. He, he really did a great job in these three books explaining what happened pretty much while the Death Star bro blew up and the aftermath that it caused. It follows Ray through a lot of stuff. It does do her backstories when she was a kid. It explains in, that she was born, like I said, in 41 BBY. It also says in there somewhere they tell the story of how when she was a kid, she tried to run away. She went back to her family. When she went back to her family, some gangsters tried to kidnap her. Um, and this was during the Clone Wars era. After that, when the Galactic Empire came in, she became a big fan of the Galactic Empire because they drove out the gangsters from that planet. Now, obviously, there was alternative motives for that. They needed the planet for something else. But in her mind, she saw it, and they did a great job giving the insight of like how could good people that were starting out as good people turn to the Empire and see them as the positive force in the universe. It was very interesting how he did it, and he did a great job. Uh, after that, chronologically, and not um, obviously not in real life time, but chronologically, Star Wars Ins Insider 157, she runs into both Pops and Vader. And there's a little bit of a, um, this kind of sets up play for her of how she's going to turn out as an Admiral later on. She's really a BA type character. She doesn't win uh, like the boxing championship belts throughout the school, but she definitely is like always placing and always towards the top. Also establishes one other little tidbit about her that continues through her story. She has a tendency to find out, shall we say, um, fakish, uh, galact, fakish emperor people, like people who are supposedly really good for the empire, but they're really trying to do shady stuff. In that insider, there is a admiral who tries to fly the ship into a sun to kill both Vader and the emperor. She exposes him. And then Vader does the, what Vader does, choky, choky, choky. And well, she finds the moles. I mean, you know, he didn't get the giggly giggly, but she finds the moles. Yep. Turned them in, ratted them out. She gets a promotion for that, obviously. And they find her to be one of their faves, as they say. Also, she runs into Tarkin and Tarkin finds her as an exceptional human being because Tarkin offers to do a favor for her. And she says, I'd rather not have a favor from you. And he says, why you don't like me? And she goes, no, pretty much. I don't want to owe favors. And Tarkin's like, yeah, you don't ever want to owe people favors. Cause then they're always going to want favors out of you. They show a little bit of back and forth, mutual respect for each other, which is kind of cool. The next time we kind of see her chronologically, obviously not in real order because that insider was 2015 where this insider right here was in 2014. The last one, 157, was April 12, April, the April Insider. This is 152, the September 2014 Insider. There's two good covers for this. Obviously, there's a Rebel cover, and there is also the Inquisitor cover. Both eh, kind of hard to find nowadays. People are kind of onto these insiders. But if you see them, you should probably pick them up because this is where she first runs into Jairus. And if you look over her right shoulder, you can also see Hera in the background. She finds out that uh, Kanan is actually a Jedi and kind of turns him into the Inquisitors, tries to arrest them and everything else. 
It also gives you the features of a novel that does a lot of backstory into Kanan and pretty good. We should probably cover this novel too at one point. I know Pete's got a little insight into this one. Uh, mm -hmm. A New Dawn. And a new dawn is pretty much where Hera and Kanan meet up, and then eventually they they uh, they get into a little trouble with the Empire. Hey Marco, can you go back to that previous picture really quick? I had a question here. Mm -hmm. I'm I I've been noticing this a lot with the different Kanans. You know, the animated Kanan, and then you see the new dawn Kanan. The Kanan in the picture with her, he looks like Lou Diamond Phillips. It's just like yeah. we're gonna pick a theme with Kanan and stick with it, man. Yeah, Sorry. I mean that's. That's kind of how he was early on in the Insiders too, and you're right in the New Hope stuff. He was looking a little bit uh, different. Yeah, but it is what it is. Oh, by the way, just in case, because we came back here, the Rebels cover is the standard cover or the quote unquote newsstand cover, mm -hmm. where the uh, Inquisitor would be the PX or comic store exclusive cover. For those that don't know, Insiders. The newsstand is the one you always find at any quote unquote newsstand, which is now just like your Myers, your Barnes and Nobles books. Well, you can see like all of the all of the art, you know, all of the you know, buy me, uh, you know, newsstand. Uh, yeah, flash. Yeah, flash. Where the mm -hmm. other ones just pure art, the comic book one. So yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, yeah, the comic book store one is that it's the PX exclusive for those people that are confused about it. I don't know if anybody is anymore. I mean, they're getting hot. So I do know people get a little bit confused about them, but that's neither here nor there. Hmm. Maybe good, enough. good information. Good to know, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Good little, good little tidbit. If you have more questions, just put a question down in the comments or underneath and I can explain it a little better, or something like that. but it's pretty, pretty simple um, when you start getting into it. So anyways, they get into the new Dawn. Did you want to cover the new Dawn at all, Pete? Well, I just got uh, introduced to that book because we had uh, John Jackson Miller on uh three comic money a couple weeks ago or maybe a month. I don't know, but he wrote that and uh, he was a big fan of uh, Ray Sloan and he, you know, introduced me to the character because I hadn't read a lot of the books yet. I'm slowly getting there, but uh, he was a fan. Like he was a big fan of the character. He, he loved writing her. And uh, he also in mentioned the, uh, the comic book appearance that we got uh, coming up too. that uh, I learned again through, uh, right. through the writer. Yeah, so this is the one thing he does write in there, and not to give away the whole book, but you can see from the relationship, this is very early on when Kanan really isn't trying to tell people that he's a Jedi, and Hera is not, she's trying to recruit people to be part of the Rebels, uh, or the Resistance at the time. And anyways, you could tell at the end of the book what's going to happen, and they're going to have a kid at the end of the Rebels <laughs> TV series. But, you know, hey, <laughs> if I just spoil that for you, whatever. Anyways, uh, next we get into her, probably her first, not probably, her canon appearance in comics. I know that's what everybody's looking for. It's canon number 12. There she is once again hunting down the rebels and hunting down Kanan and his little goopy friend in the background mm. who she kind of uses bait. We will actually call this her first appearance in comics because it's not debatable. She is not just in one panel, not just her name, not just a couple of word comments, not somebody just addressing her. She ends up showing up in multiple panels throughout this book, uh, lots yep. of action scenes, and uh, eventually she gets force pushed into a wall, and that's the end of that. And they free it. We're not gonna give away Canon Twelve. You should be reading the Canon books, no matter what. They're pretty good. They have a lot of good stuff in it. Um, yeah, I guess don't forget that one's also first Grand Inquisitor too. Oh yeah, yeah, first Grand Inquisitor. Cool. Yeah, yeah, because that's she tells them about the Quizzers there. Yes, um, I will say back at New Hope too. She or New uh, New Dawn too. She then again gets another promotion because guess what she does? She turns in another loyalist to the Empire and finds out that he's not actually a loyalist to the Empire. That he has bad intentions. Not to give away the whole book. She moves up there too. So she's been doing that. She goes to the Inquisitors and turns in Kanan in the comic book too. That's what gets her another promotion. So she's definitely making her way up throughout the world on this. Um, a bit of a rat. Well, yeah. Whole I family. mean, a bunch of rats. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, some of it, it, no, she's starting to get better because it, it gets better later. Um, so then we have got Rise of the Empire, and it's like that's a short story book. It does cover some of the, the stuff with Kane and everything else in there. Um, in that, in that story, um, there's another general who like 
says like, hey, I'm going to leave because they start talking. It's like right, right around the aftermath portion, right? So in that book, they start talking about what's happening. And Ray Sloan at that time, after the second Death Star, because one of because the executioner ended up running into the second Death Star, she's the last surviving Grand Admiral. There's nobody left. She's in charge of the Navy. There's nobody, which is an interesting point there because you probably know what I'm getting at when I say the last Grand Admiral. <laughs> she is the last Grand Admiral at that point in charge of the Galactic Navy. And and all these other guys, these commanders and everything else that have smaller ships or or some of them are admirals that at the time have got star destroyers and everything else are kind of jockeying for position to see who's going to take over the Empire and go back. Uh, she finally starts rat, stops ratting out uh, loyalists. <laughs> and one guy pretty much says, like, I'm not me and my crew aren't going to listen to you. Not going to do it. So she just shoots it down, blows up the whole ship and says, hey, listen, I'll sacrifice one ship to keep the rest of the ships in line. Which is really right. kind of cool. Like she just, like I said, she really turns into a, a BA character where she just doesn't yeah. care anymore. She's all deserters. What's that? Executing deserters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, no. Well, I mean, he was challenging. He wasn't even desert. Yeah, she does, I think. Ex but yes, she's just like, yeah, no, because I think they were trying to desert or whatever. But yeah, look, she doesn't care at that point. She just takes people down. It's pretty cool. It's a short read. There's a bunch of short stories in there, which is kind of cool. It goes back to aftermath. After that, um, you know, like I said, there's three books chronologically in her storyline. And when you get into the Avmat stuff, she starts doing a lot of things. Now, I wasn't going to put this guy's picture up originally because I thought a lot of us had already seen this character and knew he, <laughs> who he was. But Pete said we should put him up and Leaky Trooper seconded it. So we put up every picture we could find of Wedge. In Aftermath, she runs into one of the Aftermath books, she runs into Wedge. She eventually captures him. He tried to like fake out like that he was somebody else and she saw through it or whatever. Uh, it was kind of okay in the storyline. Either way, after the Battle of Endor, she ends up catch, catching Wedge. She says, like, the Galactic, the Empire is still out there trying to salvage anything they can. They don't really know what's going on. You know, Cinder's happening at this point. So she still thinks they have a shot of, of whatever the grand scheme of things is. Hmm. Hers isn't even getting into that portion. Hers is just trying to save as many members of the fleet as she can and reforming the Navy. Um, so she captures Wedge. Obviously, we know Wedge gets away. Spoiler alert, because he's in other stuff after that. Um, That's why we needed the young and the old picture, so people can see that yeah. he made it through. Yep, yep. But maybe one of the bigger points of those books is that she starts to form something called the Council, uh, the Ruling Council or the Ruling Empire Council, something to that effect. I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called, something to that effect. It pretty much is a lot of the people that are left from the Galactic Empire – but it's like a bag, a mixed bag. They have somebody named uh, Gillian Rex that they bring in. Gillian Rex is a very interesting character. We're not going to do his profile right now. Maybe we'll do a short on him later. Um, he's there. He's part of the council. So is this. They have a couple other characters that are interesting. One of the like Sith, almost like an acolyte of em the Emperor ends up showing up in there and he comes with the guy who is loaning all the money to everybody. So he, for the galactic empire there, they had like a, uh, somebody who more than one person, but there was one person in particular that was loaning them a lot of money. That guy somehow is still around. He was around in the separatist days too. They actually have that guy going through the book and Sloan pretty much calls him a slimy weasel and says, if you get in my way, I'll just shoot you. Like I blew that dude up on that, <laughs> that <laughs> ship. So you could tell she doesn't put up with it. She doesn't trust Rex. And there's a lot of reasons why uh, the guy, if you remember the character that is on like always behind Senator Palpatine, the one that's helping him out, he makes an appearance in this book too and tells her to like, Hey, maybe you should go help out Hux. And she finds old man Hux and she saves him and also gives her a clue that Rex may not be who they think he is, that he doesn't have the best intentions. His intentions pretty much is to have the battle above Jakku. Um, and he does, and we're not going to get into why. Sloan gets messed up in that because she's trying to hunt him down at this point and obviously can't. She does capture both uh, the Wexes, kind of. And what we're talking about, the Wexes, are these three people right here. Mother, son, which is Snap, the uh, chubby guy that used to be in Heroes. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Bones, which is the B1 battle droid. Very interesting character here. We'll give you a little overview. So originally, Nora Wexley... Um, 
went off to fight with the uh you know princess Leia and all them but she left snaps with her sister and uh he was kind of like this boy that was doing whatever and he f makes this b1 battle droid into pretty much a protecting assassin droid i gotta make <laughs> a mini figure out of this guy that is the coolest <laughs> battle droid i've ever seen you should definitely read the book because it's cool and how they explain it is really dope. He's kind of like the personal bodyguard. We got some um, schematics for you to make that, that many figures. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That, that'd be good. Oh, I need schematic. to get that accessory. There we go. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> that is sweet. It's like an early Anakin 3PO flashback. <laughs> yes. Yep. It really is. It, it It's really cool. And the character is like psychotic too, but also like nice, like doesn't understand like He's a protect. He's like a Terminator. He protects. Uh, a big fan Deadpool. of Deadpool. Yeah, big. Yeah, Deadpool fan. Yep. <laughs> he's a Deadpool. I was say, is he a Deadpool or a Darth Maul fan? Well, he's also got uh, like ribs too, so he looks like skeleton ish Like it's really weird. Oh, yeah, with they the it on a, yeah. They that uh. Please wants tell me he doesn't say Roger Roger. <laughs> I don't think he says Roger Roger. No, no, no. He says other stuff too. But like uh, Wedge made him so that he would scare people, but then also would kill people. So, I find it interesting. Yeah. They have a whole backstory on a character actor from J.J. Abrams movies because that guy goes all the way back to Felicity. I think his well, name's Peter Weirberg like, or something. Yeah, I think he's Abrams' best friend growing up. Yeah, <sighs> in every a Abrams production. Oh, the guy that plays Snaps. Is that yeah, yeah. Greg Guterberger. Yeah. Or yeah. Okay, well, what, and that's not even where I was going with that one. Thanks for being the worst game in Star Wars history. I was just trying to. Um, Talk about Wedge and how cool Mr. Bones is. Knowledge. Yeah, it's a cool character. So, anyways, um, I will tell you this: uh, Mr. Bones has an, an unfortunate end. Sloan, oh. yeah, like just takes care of him. Wedge is like, yeah, we'll get him. But Wedge ends up saving his mom. They get away too, obviously, because we see her later, and we will bring up when we see her later. Um, Got to be some reason we never see battle droids again. So there we go. They, you know, even the old junkers got nuked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she eventually, so she saved old man Hex, and one that builds up a relationship with young Hex, which is important. Uh, eventually, she figures that she better team up with Nora Wexley, who's somebody she kidnapped earlier, so that they could, like, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, because she's really starting to lose a grip on unifying the Navy. So she goes out, and her and um, Nora go to take down Rex. In the meantime, she, before this though, she did have some run-ins with uh, obviously Leia, Mo. She had to run in with everybody. She really does run in with, run the gamut of people she sees, but she teams up with Nora Wexley and she ends up, of course she gets rid of, she gets rid of Rex. Gillian Rex is done. Um, after that, they decide to kind of be peaceful. A little interesting point about Nora. I was just thinking about this. I think her and uh, her and Wedge, you know, you know, you know. Her and Wedge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Snap yeah. comes from Wedge? No, 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 no. Snap <laughs> came from oh. no, so, no, Nora jo Nora joined Nora Do joined. You need uh, Povich on this one to bring out the results. No, she joined the resistance. <laughs> she joined the resistance because uh Wedge's dad supposedly disappeared um mm. and that from the Empire and then uh Hold on, I'm thinking the brain's working. Then her and Wedge get in like a relationship, and then all of a sudden, I think it is either a rumor or it actually happens that Wedge's dad really uh, was not decapitated, and so then they kind of had like a relationship, but they kind of do and kind of don't, like one of those type things. So maybe she's the one that gave him the nickname Wedge. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a <laughs> kind of a takeoff from the old Walking Dead. Like, oops, you're not really dead. Oh, okay. uh, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, so there's that. You're right. But uh, that opens up a lot of possibilities of who can also be in certain squadrons and stuff, too, with Wedge, I guess. I guess Wedge could have a little... You could have a little Hera slash Kanan, and then you could have a little Wedge brother going around. Well, well, true. Was, was Rogue Squadron, like, the squadron? I know there's that television show coming out. Or, no, it's a movie, right? Isn't movie. it? Uh, yeah, so... I, I always wanted to get into the background of that squadron a little more. Wedge it, you know. There's a lot. We can get into it. There's a lot of people that show up in there, including Luke at one point. Was yeah, people clearing out a lot of those uh, back issues, so it's hard tracking some of that stuff down now. 
Yeah, but maybe we'll cover that stuff in in their next video. I will say this: um, there's a lot of different formations of that, and since we're bringing up squadrons, guess what? Ray Ray actually shows up in the video game squads too. Mm. Um, so she's kind of had a long history. Yes. So did you have an add on? No. Nope. Okay. Your red five standing by. All right. Red. Yeah. Red five. <laughs> there you go. Nice. Oh, we, all got, we got dad joke. That actually was better than a dad joke. Um. But so after that, she after she kills Rex, um, she ends up. Why would I? They really should have done these names a little better. Uh, Kitty Hawks. She ends up, and for those people who don't know who Kitty Hawks is, it's this guy right here. This is Kitty Hawks, who I'm referring to. That guy is the most slappable face you will ever see. Oh yeah, you definitely lost. So she (laughs) she goes. He's on. His dad is. uh, I don't know if his dad's dead. If not, Brandon Gleason is his dad. Oh, you mean in the. No, so uh, she she ends up grabbing him and all the children that were being trained because her dad was in the training program for the uh, Galactic Imperial training program for little kitties uh, when you want them to uh, <laughs> clean their uniforms and do what you want to do. But she gets a whole ship full of those and a couple other ships, and she ends up flying out to the quote-unquote unknown regions. We do know this. This is what we know after this because it's been in like the Phasma book. It's been in couple other books too she has a connection to phasma she has a connection to cardinal cardinal brings her name up um she has a connection to snook uh she has a connection to snooky yeah the the melty snooky whatever (laughs) whatever the melty thing was she has a connection to that character she was the actual first uh, of course the first admiral of the first order so she was in charge of pretty much all their military actions at that point we don't actually know that she is dead. We just know that she hasn't been around for a little bit. So, so aftermath and, and this character, do they get into how they're using old ex military from the Empire yes. in the First Order? Like, the well, kind of military experience, or yeah. So, it, what it is is she's going around and collecting it, and you see it. It's really cool because it, it brings up Cinder and everything else. But there's a lot of disarray, and a lot of people are jockeying for position and. Because where they set her up earlier, where she kills off people who aren't really loyal to the Empire, and you know she turns them into Vader to get the choky choky or whatever, you know she shoots them or whatever she does to turn them up. She mm. then just goes on a killing spree, and she finally is like, "Hey, I'm taking this over. I am in charge." And you see all these people doing different things, and some of them are like, "We're looking for somebody to follow." Other ones were trying to take over stuff, and then. Rex was trying to use the council to take over everybody and become the new emperor. Um, obviously, now with the last three movies, there's a little bit of... I don't know. I should probably go back and read it because originally under that, you can see maybe a different light to what the emperor was doing and that he wasn't going to be reincarnated. But since we know that JJ, since you brought him up, JJ A-bombs um, decided to bring him back there. Let's not go there again. Well, yeah. <laughs> we don't well, want to go back to this aftermath. Is this timeline close then to where we're at in Mando then? I mean, we're talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely. Cool. Yeah. So aftermath covers like. So aftermath covers right at. So like you have Endor happen, right? So you're, you know, you're talking yeah. four. And so, yeah, this is right about the time of Mando. Parts of aftermath. A uh, hundred. Yes. And then she's going to the unknown regions. Right around that time, you know, because you got the ballot. The first thing that intrigued me when you pulled that book up, Empire's End, was you know that they're going to have to go that direction is what happens eventually, how the First Order rises and all of that. And the Empire's the Empire's over, but there's still fragments of it out there, especially in the Outer Rim. So Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to read, I might want to start with that third book. (laughs) That was, yeah. Well, that's kind of what's interesting about all the ships rising out of. The ground because <laughs> technically she had a fleet, but it wasn't that large a fleet. And I think that's where some people had an issue. People who were following Canyon and reading it are like, wait a minute, why is there a bunch of ships underneath water? Where, like, I mean, look, there's we San Francisco see- after Pearl Harbor, they got busy, man. They just started building, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, we could get a lot of holes in those movies, but like, this was one of the ones where I think people were really excited. When she showed up in Squadrons, the video game, people were really excited to see her again. And I think people, like deep diving fans, were expecting to see her show up in one of the next movies. And when she didn't, and when that wasn't the explanation of, 
um, where the fleet was because they didn't really explain it in the movies like that. I think some fans were a little bit disappointed. I will be. I will say I was too when they didn't. When she didn't show up, she's written so well through these things. Like I know we kind of flew through them, but look, she was in. She had two backstories and in insiders. She had. She was a main focus in uh, the aftermath series. She was a, pretty much the main antagonist focus in uh, a new dawn kind of, but she was. Um, she's been in, like I said, squadrons. She's been in the comic books. She's been in so much. Now she didn't make an appearance in Rebels, which I think people were kind of let down there. But it only made sense because it was kind of like the backstory of getting into it, and they never got that yeah, far back into it. Early. Yeah, I you got that. Something. There's still a window. Is they still have that window open? They could do something. Right. Now. That's yeah, that's yeah. that's what I was curious about, Pete. Like, how many characters are all media? Like, she's in the video game, in comics, in novels. She sounds like one that's ripe for mining in this new era, right? They're doing between Jedi and uh, force awakens. I, you know, and you know, I, I, I don't know any way to put this, but she is a minority and a woman and there's, they want more, you know, we want more of that. So, well, this is the thing. So is she, the question is kind of like the question that originally came up and kind of is, is, is she the new like R2D2, right? Like, is she just a placeholder that's going to be around in everything might, interact with some of the characters which she has a huge history of interacting with a ton we went through the list and i know i probably missed some people that she interacted with but she look she interacted with all the rebels she interacted with uh pretty much the rogue squadron which is popular right now like wedge and wexley and all these other people that are around that we know are still around or at least they're going to do something with she interacted with the first order which love it or hate it some people really love kylo ren some people do i mean phasma i thought they did a disservice with her novel but I can understand they did it. Her disservice with her ending too. Well, yeah. I, the movies, we're not going to talk. The movies yeah. are what they are. Um, but yeah, I mean, so, but she also had it early on to great characters such as Tarkin. You know what I mean? She had a link to Tarkin. She had a link to that. And when everybody's like, oh, well, you're right with Emperor's End, like, is she just the like R2D2? And I think when I said that, you know, people are like, R2D2? Well, he was. Well, you know, when you pose that question, Marco, is she the new R2-D2? The first place I went was she she hasn't been animated or in a live action show, but Pete brought up a good point. There hasn't been anywhere in the shows or in the movies where she would fit timeline-wise. So I think she could become yeah. the next R2-D2 depending upon what they do with her character. And I hope they do. This She's a really cool character. Well-written. She's in all of the other media. Get her onto a show, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think after, you know, I think some of the stuff when they're starting to see what's going on with video games and how characters are being, there's easier characters and harder characters to, to end up folding into the cinematic universe, okay? There's one character that's pretty hard to fold into the cinematic universe because introducing him... Starkiller? <laughs> well, yeah, that's... <laughs> Or but there's, an, there's another one who's very popular that wears a Mandalorian mask that to try to get the general population, even Star Wars fans, the non-canonized Star Wars fans to understand who that character is, you can't just drop him, right? Like you could kind of do it with Mandalorian because there's nothing else on to watch. But with her, she's a character that no matter what it is, if you think it's a diversity, whatever, or if you think it's just a great storyline that's been written, which I would argue that her storyline, no matter what, has been pretty good, and that's usually the characters I gravitate towards, like the Thrawns, is that you can plug her in, and she's across the timelines, and she's just like another character, because this is what you said originally was when I said, is she the new R2-D2? You were like, no, she's... Well, wouldn't she be the new... Um, the new Hondo. Yeah, and you're right. She kind of would, but she, she'd go... She, Hondo started in the cartoons where she started in 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 the literary area. She had that gangster background, almost like a mob. It was almost like Godfather when she's with Tarkin. Tarkin's like, "Ooh, you're gonna do me a few favors." She's like, "No, I know your game. I'm not doing that." And then later, she she gets into the military. Um, you know, it it almost has that Hondo type feel where she 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 started as a bad guy, but she's she kind of became a good guy. And there was one more thing I was going to say. I've got the perfect intro for. Mm -hmm. You asked this earlier when you said she's the only Grand Admiral, right? Mm -hmm. 
So if yeah. they do a live action, the blue man who will not be named, what a great way to introduce her, but saying, oh, well, he's a grand admiral. What other grand admirals are there out there? And that's where I thought they couldn't do that in Rebels because it was too soon. She wasn't a grand admiral yet. So now it's like, oh. No, they couldn't. But like of grand admirals that are in charge of the Royal Fleet or the, the Galactic Fleet, she is the only one, quote unquote, technically, because she's the only one that has. He has one ship. She actually has a fleet. Um, but He's more with of that, a commodore than a grand admiral. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with that being with that being said, it'd be that's one that's a great point. It'd be very easy for her to either make an appearance or him to look her up and try to figure out where she is because yeah. he, he probably knows everything. Like Thrawn just he's great. He knows everything. So yep. um but you're right. I don't think you can just drop her in like like the last season of Mandalorian, they're just introducing these characters, like dropping them in because it's like, oh, Boba Fett, everybody knows him. Or they drop in, even Cobb Vanth. It was a it was a pretty good intro because you do it the other way. Yes, exactly. You do it the other way. You let her tell a little story. Hey, we just got this little story we want to tell. And then you connect it by say, hey, we can have Mando just show up in the like things like that. Yeah. Like, that connective tissue that you can show from the outside to yep. show timeline. Yeah, That's how well, she could become the next R2D2, right? Right. Or you could have, I mean, you could do it with, yes, but you could also have her, yes, and you can have her do that. And you can have her do something with the uh, Rogue Squadron, you know. And then in the end, who who do you think the Resistance pilot, pilots are trying to hunt down in whatever the one with the po Opa is, where they're going into space and they're, uh, they got a Cara Dune or whatever? Well, yeah, you got to – well, yeah, the – Rangers well, of the New Republic. Rangers of the New Republic. Who do you think the Rangers are going after? They're going after that Next fleet. They're Empire trying to find military, that fleet. Yeah. yeah. They're 100% trying to find that fleet. Yeah, so Rogue Squadron's a good idea, though. They could have her show up in multiple – I mean, there's enough cross – I'm trying to listen and get it all in because I know absolutely nothing about this. I'll be 100% honest. Totally new information character to me. So I'm trying to absorb all of it, and it sounds like you could really put her in – almost everything that is either planned coming and, and kind of current and, and what a way to tie a bunch of crossroads together. Yes. That'd be, what a great long time yep. yeah, yeah. Imagine this. And I know we don't want to go too far into speculation land, but imagine like they defeat Moff Gideon and they kind of, they pose the question, how many other ex empire, you know, want to be general, want to be emperors are out there and they could like, Say and then in the you show, show a ship, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You show a ship and then you're like, oh, we found another one, and and Thrawn is like, oh yeah, I know who that is, you know. Or yeah, she no could explanation. Listen, yep. listen, if if she was a favorite of Tarkin and uh, Moff Gideon, right? It has links to the Tarkin Initiative. You're telling me she might not know about who he is. She might not know and have him on a little plan. Oh, you know think I mean? about this. The new captain, the new Andor show in the Tarkin mm -hmm. era. She pops up as like a number two or something. And, you know. She would have been early on during that. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean. You could Easter egg it, though. And like you said, yeah. with the Rogue Squadron. I mean, Rogue Squadron, we potentially could have Wedge. We could have the older, you know, Nora Wexley. Maybe they yeah. have a little that tie that in. Yeah, you could, have, you could definitely. Because they go off. On the other they, side. Yep, because you know they want crossover characters between these shows, right? Absolutely. That's something you I forgot to bring up when I now that you mentioned because of the wink, wink, nod, nod. When they they actually did go off together for their little wink, wink, nod, nod to go chase down people together. So you know, what I mean, like that was their I'll whole thing. Bow, bow. Oh, we're we're traveling together to chase down Imperials. You know what I mean? Wink, wink, nod, nod. So. Yeah, they could definitely put something to that that together too. I mean, she could cross over. She could be the the connecting tissue for a lot of these space stories. And then mm -hmm. you you're right, you could Easter. I never thought about that, but you could Easter egg her into the other stuff too. You could like Easter egg her into a, a ton of stuff to tie all this yeah. together. Like and just wow, wow. Can we sneak her in a bad batch somewhere? Sorry, <laughs> I have to tell you. I do have to tell you this though, like. I did not see what the character, obviously I read the books first, so I didn't, and you know, this description of what a character looks like. I didn't see what the character looked like originally. Obviously you're not going to see that till you start to see art and you get to see everything else with it. Even though I read Dawn and I had the insider, maybe I passed forward or didn't really realize what was going on there with that because. Didn't connect the know, character. Yeah, I didn't connect the characters. And then when Aftermath hit and what Chuck Wingo, Wing, what, how do you ever say his last name, Wingo? 
whatever he did with that aftermath series, it was special. And how he wrote those characters, every single character that he wrote in there had great potential and you wanted to see. You know what I mean? And Good character she, development. Mm -hmm. Now and I really want to read really, these books. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I, as well. I'm not kidding. When I saw those books, I almost picked them up, but I'm like, I don't want to know about the the next three movies, the interlude to that. I don't give a crap, but but I, I'm passing up really good stuff if there's good characters and they build it in there. And so yeah. I, might, I might grab that. And and I gotta be honest, it's because of the Art of the Empire, right? Because that was the next chapter for me after Return of the Jedi. So when they came out with these new yeah. three, I'm like, oh, I don't want to, you know, this but it's yeah. canon too, right? After it that. is, and that's kind of what the heir of the empire is now, right? Yeah, like they've already written out some of these portions. That's where, like, when you see people like you know JJ and a couple of the other guys, Patrick or whatever, will talk about like you can't do the Thrawn thing, and I said it all the time too. And one of the reasons is probably, and I'm not going to put words in their mouth because I don't know that well if they think this, but is because of books like the Aftermath and New Dawn, and what's kind of happened in there, and what well not New Dawn obviously because that was earlier, but like what you see in Aftermath occurring. And that type of stuff where you see like, no, that's where the fleet went. Like, you know where Project Cinder is. You know where it is. Mm -hmm. And like, I guess you could still throw stuff in from air. But like the way the books are going that Timothy's doing anyways, why would you want it? And I know people love nostalgia. And and I do too. Don't give me, look. I mean, hey, you know. I'm Well, if only you go to China, only Filoni can bring Thrawn back. So. Yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is like, even though you you do, I'm promising you this. If they continue on to the path that they're going, what it looks like they're going with that character, you don't want to see Heir to the Empire. You want to see the new new. And the yes. new new, man, it yeah. sure is nice. It sure is nice. And then you incorporate all this to make up. So they're not forgetting you. Like this yep. was it, Aftermath had to have been one of the first nods pretty much to Legacy, right? Yep. They were saying, like, hey, cool. We well, obviously the Thrawn books, but like we we were saying that hey we're going to give you this and Tarkin was pretty cool too actually all this looks good but you know we're going to give you some of this stuff to fill it in because we knew you're fans of air we're trying to clean up the two storylines that they had that were competing back in the day with legacy mm -hmm. and we'll give you this new portion here where you can see some stuff and we'll also explain um we'll explain some things and i think if you got the trevro like if you read the trevro script if you read Trevor's script and caught this would have, these books would have tied in a little bit to what was going on and it would have been a little cleaner and the canon would have been a little bit better. And I know we always knock the three and it is what it is. Wasn't a great plan. Obviously it didn't work out that well. I don't think it's going to be like the prequels where the prequels have grown on people, but yeah. I mean, this it, look, if you don't like, if you don't like nine, read read aftermath if you're a big fan of nine and you think a jj abrams did a wonderful excellent superb <laughs> job on that movie don't read aftermath don't read new dawn don't don't care about ray like ray sloan shouldn't be somebody you read about but if you're like hey i only watched it one time or i don't care that much whatever go back and read these you know read the books because they're good and they'll fill in a lot of stuff and you'll, you'll have a good time maybe we should review those books yeah Maybe we should. Every time you books. say aftermath, though, I keep seeing Doctor Dre. Like I can't. You <laughs> say keep popping in my head. Like, that yeah. Album. Yeah. No, but 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 honestly, I know we're starting to do these reviews on the novels. I know we've got uh, friends of the shows and stuff like Jedi Johnson and Jen that are really excited to do Dark Disciples. So we have that coming up on the on the thing. We have to actually get that, and we might actually pre-record that instead of doing it live, just because we need some more pre-recorded content. But. After that, maybe if you guys put it down low, put it in the comments down low. Tell me, you know, don't do it on the side. Just do it down low so I'll remember. Because I go back and look at the videos, and that's sometimes how I got ideas of what people want. We've been getting a little light on those. So make sure you hit the like button. And after that, you go like, yes, no, we don't care. Like, I don't even, if you don't care, please put, I yeah. don't care. I'd like to know. So and if you want Leaky to be part of novel reviews, you got to let me know way in advance. I'm the slowest reader. At, we gotta get we gotta get you something that's on audio. Audio right? books. Yeah, yeah. Audible. I even have Audible, and I just I. Well, that was a problem when they were like, "It's thirteen and a half hours on Audible." I was like, "Yeah, I'm not. I can't know." I need to drive somewhere because yeah. when I drive, I can listen. Just, I can't listen to audio books at home. I feel weird. I'm. But if you no, but if you 
organized comics. Like you just do something He's where you multitask. I'm telling I like you. That. When I'm building Legos, I could be listening. I'm yeah, exactly there you go. something where your hands are just busy, but your brain yep. is still you know free. So folded laundry, you know, yep. taking yep. down Christmas lights, whatever it might be. It helps you to feel young, just like the teenagers. You just walk around with your, you know, your your earphones in. Oh, yeah, I could go to the mall and just be, yeah, just I like that. Into the book and be like, oh, I can't hear oh, you. Yeah. you need math by Dr. Oh, Dre this year. Hear. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> no, but it's kind of cool. Like, because like Solo said, he's like, I don't really, he's like, I, I kind of don't really have much on this. Do you still... I was like, yeah, of course. And he, and he got excited hearing about when we start to do the run through. And he's like, this is really cool stuff. And I'm telling you, it is. And like, you know, look, I'm not saying like, hey, uh, go out there, spend a hundred dollars on a comic book or whatever 12 is going for at this point. Like it ain't mm -hmm. worth that, but it's definitely worth the novels. It's definitely worth finding out what she's about. And it's definitely a good storyline. And if you think stuff, that's why it got pricey again. Oh, because of the Grand Inquisitor? Yeah, because the Jason Isaac and they were rumoring him as Inquisitor. So everybody, ooh, let's go. So that's why that book got pricey again. Or a little well, bit. Don't we have a um opportunity to make it more like Pete? Uh, question for you. Like you have access to these authors. Couldn't we plant some seeds about some of our ideas, how to get her into the live action shows? You know. We tried. It, I, bet they I bet you if they didn't have to put created by Lucas on it and they get to put created by this creator, they probably would be putting on a lot more shows real quickly. Created real quickly. Tales from the Dark Side. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to go over great. I got yeah. my new goal, Wookie. We are going to have in a, in a Disney Plus Star Wars show created by Tales from the Dark Side, this character. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Bones the Battle Droid. <laughs> Dude, Dr. Bones the Battle Droid is like if. I don't, you can't do it as, look, they always do those funny, like, that was one where they started doing, when they did, like, Freemakers and everything else, and originally Freemakers was supposed to be canon, and then they went so far off with it that they couldn't keep it as canon anymore, and they had a similar, like, droid-type character in that, Roger, that they would always say Roger Rogers, though, but, like, I thought they were going to do Mr. Bones, and I was just like, oh, how satisfying it would be for a homicidal so b one but I will say this, as much as Sloan was a surprise to see her and like, oh, wow, they did a really good job with that character. And uh, I, I mean, I don't know. She's very appealing to the eyes, I guess you could put it. And I'm not saying that this isn't, but like how they described him. like <laughs> Transition from saying she's very appealing to the eyes. To <laughs> well, so like right where the circle is, the arm, those are supposed to be like bones. It's supposed to look like almost like a skeleton, like death bone machine, like how it was described in the book. So to see like the actual like art thing for it, I was kind of semi disappointed because I pictured like oh he's almost, just painted, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I figured like almost it's supposed to be like bloody painted and like look like a a a, a, a carcass, a carcass. <laughs> like now you guys know how I feel when I open my Legos and it's just a just hand solo printed on a block. I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, if once again, if you read it and you're like, hey, Marco is just crazy and he's got lunacies about what he remembers of that book, please do comment below. But I do think it was like described almost carcassy. So um, like the decomposing flesh, just things just dangling. Yeah, off like of people were like, what is that thing? Like it is it, it was supposed to intimidate. And then like if it didn't intimidate you, it would kill you, too. So. Um, and he and, and there's the battle droids are such clowns, they had to give them a little, you know, they had to dress them up, yeah. yeah so they 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 were clowns, around. but clowns also, how many years later? Like, think of how yes. how long ago it was. Like, yeah. if somebody was rocking like a pinto that was all, like, hey, we put a bunch of stuff on it, it's all hooked up. Look at my new yeah. ride, yeah, yeah. People would make fun of you trying to roll around the pinto. Oh, music. yeah, absolutely. Well, I know people want the Nora Nora winky winky uh wedge hookup for <laughs> resistance or whatever, or the, everybody shipping them. Yeah, but I would really like to see, well, even if they do that, I want her to go back and run into her son so that I can get live action Mr. Bones. I, I, I mean, lights out. We might have just set off a whole new uh, erotic fan fiction thing there. <laughs> <laughs> About what? <laughs> wink, wink, uh, Nora. Oh, and Wedge, Wedge and Wedge Wexley. Yeah, Wedge Wexley. Well, but, how I recall it being written, there was some type of, um, I think, a little bit more than flirtation going on with him. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, it's been years. What was it, 2014 or 15? They hugged twice. <laughs> <laughs> I think how Chuck wrote it. Older after a battle. Hey, Luke and Leia did more than that. They're brother and sister. Yeah. 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 I think how Chuck wrote it, they like 
took off together and it was like a double entendre meeting type of thing. So. I got you. I got you. He was really good, man. They really should bring him back to write stuff. Um, James Bond has taken off with a few people yeah. that hunt down some villains once in a while. It would we better stop here. I'm going to go the whole, all of the Luke uh, when he's brought the Death Star run. You know, all the, <laughs> does it pull out too soon? All <laughs> yeah. You know what? Instead of people writing hate mail to Catherine Kennedy, you should write like a, hey, we love Chuck and you should bring him back. Like, yeah. let's try to get somebody a job back. Let's try yeah, to bring that yeah. guy back. Because that guy really did quality stuff, man. Well, what, um, what, wait, what happened to him? What happened to Chuck? Yeah, he's bots got a hold of him. Bots got bots got a hold of him on Twitter, and they uh, they didn't realize what bots could do to somebody, so they they let him go off of a comic book series. Uh, Unfortunately, he was supposed to write a comic book series. He was already on comics, and he was supposed to write another one, and then that turned into what's that terrible Darth Vader series? Vader, um, Vader down. What? Get out of here! No, I don't know. I'm just thinking. I'm, I'm <laughs> no. behind a reading. So vision, I'm dark vision. Terrible. I the one, where, the one where they have him on the horse with the freaking shield and the lightsaber. Dark visions. That piece of junk. And they replaced his series with that piece of junk. Um, so that's what you get. You know, when you start calling for people's jobs, even if bots do, that's what you get. You get you get dark visions. Enjoy that. Go read that. We we won't review that piece of junk because. Uh, there's two things in Star Wars that really will get my goat. Dark Visions is one, and the other is any movie J.J. Abrams did. So, it can't be any worse than Jedi versus Sith. Oh, yeah. Darth Vader was riding a horse I, with I, a I know, shield. I, I know. It, was I'm, he riding a bunch of horses? Saying, the well, they did the Death Dealer thing. thing. They did the Death Dealer thing. It was good. I'm just saying if I have to read one <laughs> between those two, uh, I'm reading Jedi vs. Sith. No, because Bane at least was crazy, know. and I like I like the little thing. Yeah, listen, dude. <laughs> I, I, know, I, know, I know you're trying to do the Death Dealer thing, and I get that. We have Ooh. gone way off the rails with this. But, <laughs> dude, you had Darth... Why is Darth Vader riding a horse? Oh, by the way, not only that, he's, like, saving people, like peasants and stuff. Oh, like, right. They all rode a bunch of horses in Episode Nine with the extra... The extra legs. Oh yeah, people got all mad about that. But hey, let's get rid of Chuck and let's write it in a comic book where he's riding it. That's where the horse came from. You're what kidding me, that, right? That were the space pirates. Yes. <laughs> no, the the uh, last yes. Skywalker came from. Yes. The of the- <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It was. It's. It's. It is. It. It is arguably, and I would love somebody. You know what? Comment below. Comment in the chats. Comment where everybody. I will challenge somebody to this. In current canon, please try to compare a series that is as bad as that. There Challenge. Is not, there's not Challenge. A, there Put is not. A, I will have you on. Feel free to come on. I, like I will go toe to toe with you. No, 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 no. No, no, I, it, no, no. no. It, it, you, please, please try it because that is the worst. You know, they've done a lot of good things, you know, with comics. And in the literary word, obviously, like it's getting really popular. I don't think people even figured out what it was, and everybody's like, "Dark Horse is great." And now all of a sudden, you start seeing all this new stuff drying up too, and, and people are like, "Wait, why is it drying up? Why is it?" Because they're actually doing pretty good stuff, like mm. away from everything else, away from comics and everything else. As a Star Wars fan, they are really doing a lot of good stuff. They're really making it for everybody. If you like something, you'll get it. You, if you don't, you can go on, and they have something else. They have enough offerings for you to get through they've actually gotten really good writers and taken the shackles completely off of them and we've seen that because if you go toe-to-toe and compare the new thrawn series not even the new newest book which is the prequel thrawn your the new thrawn against air the empire it is written better it's just flat out written better the storyline i would argue is better you can argue the storyline but it's written better the stuff is it's higher quality it's not so like uh jawa that some dude cut a sock open and put over so that it looks like a jawa on it you know it's like legitimately they've made something with it it's almost like you know how they're doing with the black series now where they're doing realism face scans like that's the quality stuff they're putting out like it or hate it like you don't have to like all of it but they're putting out quality stuff that's one thing you can't argue with except for dark visions and except for dark (laughs) vision and and i like they're putting out very good quality stuff when they don't short end stuff when they don't have to bring somebody on at the last minute. Yes, okay. 
they're not, yeah, they're putting out quality stuff. Is all I'm trying to say. I don't even know. I've heard about this centaurs. We need more centaurs. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, you know, everybody says the dark horse stuff was the best stuff. They had ships and elf jedis yeah. and centaur jedis. But, so. but I do have a way to tie this back to your your question. Your mm-hmm. your the question you posited is is Ray the uh, new R two D two, and it gets into what you're saying about the new quality. One of the things I I'm kind of on board now with new canon is they're still mining from legacy, but now there's all these cool characters in new canon like Ray. And like you said, there's some really quality writing. I mean, I, these, um, the, the new grand Republic books, I'm saying that wrong. High Republic. High High Republic. Republic. Um, again, the quality in there is really good. And those, that's, those are two comic book writers, Charles Sully and Kevin Scott. Yeah. Um, and, and if we know, like, I know we heard room, like Feige is coming in, but if they're going to tie everything together, you want to have quality character dr- driven stuff that they can pull from and they are pulling from books. They're doing it, which is awesome. The one thing I'll say that they finally did and they did this with high Republic is instead of scrapping stuff because something didn't go right, which obviously because of what's going on, they had to switch the timeline and change around when the release dates were, they decided, Hey, we're going to stick with the plan no matter what. Yeah. Sure. The timeline doesn't matter so much. And that's what I think they, you know, they were trying to drop movies every December and they were going to try to do the summer drop with the, the back end movies that blew up in their face. They are learning. That's the one thing. If they kept down that path, I'd be stomping my foot too. But look, I don't live in my mom's basement. Haven't for a very, very long time. And that type of nonsense will get you in trouble. I know it'll get you a lot of clicks on the internet. There's no arguing that, but yelling at people and saying like, Oh, they're trying to destroy this. They're trying to destroy that. They're really not. If you no. look at what's going on in Star Wars, they, yeah, that was a mess up. You get one. You take an L. Everybody takes an L every once in a while. Shoot. Yeah. You take an L, you get back up. You, you get a couple W's. And they have a lot more W's in this canon than they do L's. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. A- Aftermath was a perfect example of that. And going forward with the High Republic, that first novel and all the subsequent stuff that ties into it has been home runs. And if you don't think it is, well, then maybe Star Wars actually isn't for you. Maybe it isn't. No, they're doing, it. they're doing a lot better, and and <laughs> they want to make money just like everybody else. I mean, you gotta, you take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and there you got the facts. Like the dude, dude, dude. Hey, yeah. Somebody, I'm drawing, hey, somebody told Nora and Wexley about the facts of life too. So there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, if you don't think George Lucas was about making that money, you should probably go back and look at what he was doing back then to get some of that money. Excuse, Excuse me. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we, we I think, have extended this video as long as we're going to extend it, unless we want to go down 15 more rabbit holes, which we could, but we'll leave it to a live show so I can get yelled at about how I don't know what I'm talking about. So I always love to hear. Someday we will get through a show where, where you don't talk about episode nine. Not today, but someday. I didn't bring him up. You stop bringing him up. We won't have a problem with it anymore. Anyways, hey, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, he's going to take you out here in a minute. But before he does, make sure that you go out there. And if you aren't seeing, oh, I've seen some really cool stuff lately. I know this is a tape issue, but hopefully there's still some stuff over there at Wanted Comics. Go out there and check out our boy, Drew. He's doing really good things, especially with Star Wars. One of the big bangers out there, guys. Go out and see what he's doing. Wanted Comics, that's with an X, dot com. He's got some really cool covers. And he's helped us out in a couple of things. We might be having a little bit of surprise coming up here, too. So hopefully we... Uh, Hopefully we do. Solo, could you take us out? Please, everybody, remember that we do accept Super Chats, and we do love your guys' chats, period. You guys are the greatest fans this side of the galaxy. Please go down, force push that like and subscribe. Then go over and save or smash that bell so you can hear the greatest chat and the greatest talk this side of the galaxy. May the force be with you. Always. Always. Always.